SM exoscope, well, which basically allows you to see the waveform. Um, and it's an oscilloscope, right? Um, and finally, I have, and that is a VST3, I have the Doro meter from Waves. Or is it a Doro stereo? Which gives me some additional feedback on the levels in the metering. Now, this template is basically just for production and to do some mixing. Normally, I don't have any processing on the inserts or I advise against it, but there is one plugin that I actually always have on the master out and that is the SSL bus compressor. And this is the Duende one. There's also one from Waves. Um, but I, th I find this to, to, you know, somehow just give a bit more unity and a bit more color to, to the, to the track. Um, I usually start out with very, very modest, modest and mild settings. So this is 15 dB, something like this. And I'll just mix into it. And as, as, um, as I progress through the production, I will start to fine tune, um, we'll start to fine tune this, um, this compressor uh, even more. So that's basically it for the setup of the master out. Um, right. Now let's hide the sidechain kick as well. Um, okay. Now, basically, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some buses. I will have a bus for the drums. And on this bus, I will have a Pro EQ from Studio One. Turn on the spectrometer. And I will set up my favorite compressor, which is the Arts Acoustic CL1 Opto Electric Compressor Limiter. Um, which is just an awesome compressor. I really love this one. Uh, and the great advantage of using this compressor is that it actually keeps the transients um, pretty much intact. There are a lot of different other compressors out there, um, but I found that some of them tend to negatively influence the transients um, if you engage them um, uh, hard enough. Um, but this one actually leaves, leaves the original signal very, very much intact. Um, you know, you could choose some presets. I, I usually don't engage any of these plugins um, in the template itself. And on the drum bus, I usually have one more plugin. Um, and let me just find that. And that is here. <laughs> Um, you know, if, uh, if you, um, layer multiple, multiple drum, uh, um, multiple drum sounds, which, you know, sometimes you do when working on dance music, you layer two or three kicks on top of each other to get a nice full and well-rounded kick sound that may somehow sometimes negatively influence the transients. And I have the transient designer by SPL, um, to you know, be able to correct some of the the, the transient the stuff that's um, not the way it's supposed to be or the way it should be, um, and I usually run that before it goes into the compressor. And again, it is there; it's not doing anything at this point. Um, and um, I only engage it or use it when um, when there's a need for it. But you know. It, I use it quite a lot, um, so it's 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 very handy for me to have in my template. So these are the drums. Now, what you could do if you have uh, multiple kick samples layered on top of each other as audio files, that means that you have three kick drum tracks with each containing one sample. Um, for grouped processing of that kick sound, 
you can add another bus just for the kick. But I usually end my um, divisions or uh, uh, downward bussing on the on the drum bus. Um, and it all depends on the way I approach a track if I need more buses prior to the drum bus. But basically all the drum sounds come to the drum bus. Okay. Um, now let me just quickly create a bus for the bass. And let's just give that a, another color. Let's give it this one. And again, for the bass, what I do is I choose a different, different EQ, one that has variable filters. Um, and it's called the XEQ by Solid State Logic. Again, this is a SSL Duende plugin running on the DSP platform. Um, and um, as you can see, you're able to choose different filter types, which is really cool. Uh, and this is basically just to shape the bass sound a bit. Um, and after that, I'll be running that through the seal one as well. And the reason I use a compression on the bass is, well, because I tend to have pretty extreme bass sounds running through my tracks. I also do use uh, some external synths to create bass lines and, you know, just want to control the dynamics a bit. Let's create a bus track for the synths. Add uh, another color there. Um, again, for the synths, I'd like to have the XEQ on there. And that will be it for now. There's, you know, there's, there's, um, there's a lot of stuff you can do with synths, uh, basically with any sound, but I, I tend to do a lot of um, crazy FX type stuff with synths. Um, but that is usually done on the actual audio tracks running out of the individual synths. And this is just a bus to, you know, bring it all together. Um, and there's basically two more buses that I have in my template. One is for a voice, which has the SSL, or is it? And the SSL vocal strip on it. And I may add another one called the Vocal Rider Stereo. And there's the Vocal Rider. It would be a great idea to have another bus, add a bus channel, that is called... Um, non vox mix which actually does nothing more um let's take a different color uh, let's take this one which actually does nothing more than provide a side chain input for the vocal writer which means that basically Um, all the tracks go through the non-vox mix and the non-vox mix sends it to the vocal writer. And that's not going to be pre-fader because the non-vox mix is going to the master out. Okay. Now, one last bus channel to be created, and let's call that effects, which is basically my special effects bus. Um, let's give it that one. Um, and that's going into the non-vox mix as well. So that's basically what I have when it comes to buses. 
Now, the last couple of things I'm going to add to my template are FX channels, the send and return. Um, I'm going to create them, put the plugins on them. Uh, I'm not going to connect them or anything just yet, because that will be something that I'll do um, when actually creating the track. But I'm going to uh, add an FX channel called short verb or verb short, which will be featuring short reverb. Um, I'll be having a verb long it's going to be my long reverb and um, just put a nice color on those two now what I usually do on verb channels or send channels with a reverb on it is that I put in a low cut around 100 hertz to make sure that I'm not getting any of that low frequency rumble that you sometimes get in, in reverbs and Basically, having a reverb on the lower frequencies, you know, doesn't really um, make sense all that much. Um, and the reverb I use is the SSL Xverb, which I need to track down in this long list. Where is it? There it is. Is the SSL Xverb? And now let me just load up a small. Um, small room where is it and there it is and let's copy this chain to the long verb channel and choose a large um, where is it where is it a large large Okay, I can't find it. Why can't I find it? Because it's a medium. Okay, I take the medium. Medium dark plate, right. So this is the verb medium. All right. So these are the two verbs that I'm using. Um, you know, sending them in. Sometimes uh, you need short verbs, sometimes you need a medium or long verb. Um, I'll just have them ready at any point to send the signal into it. Um, what else do we have? We have a delay. You might have some delays. I actually, I usually have three delay, um, three delay channels with various types of delay and various delay times. And again, let's give this a nice color. Let's make it yellow. Um, and again, I usually have an equalizer in front of there. Um, and just copy that over to those as well. And let's start out with a hybrid delay from waves again as you can see i'm a pretty big fan of the waves plugins um, and just load up the where is it so the rap fox it's a good starting point uh, you can choose whichever um, Next up is one of my favorite delays that is in Studio One. It's the Groove Delay, which is a very cool delay. Um, gives you a lot of control, a lot of cool effects you can achieve with it. Um, and let's put that to 100%. Um, let's see here, dry wet, it is already 100% cool. And the last delay is just going to be an analog delay. Um, yeah. Right. So I've got my delay line set up. Um, just different types of delay that I might use in a track. Um, and who knows what, what's going to happen. Um, 